Good afternoon and welcome to another episode of Unscripted and Unchained RPG Review. I am DM Bloodworth and as you can see by the graphics today I'm going to uh, be taking a look at Beck Me, which is uh, Dungeons and Dragons uh, Basic Expert Companion Masters and Immortals. Uh, this is a series of Dungeons and Dragons that ran parallel to Advanced Dungeons and Dragons First Edition. Uh, this ran from 1983 through 1987, I believe. Uh, I had just recently got the completion of my collection of these books, and so that's that's kind of why I'm, uh, you know, doing this video today. So, Beck Me begins with the basic edition, and I'm going to go into a little bit of detail with this uh, today. I am currently running a, a campaign uh, for, you know, for a group and they're, they're just about approaching level, uh, level three. And so we're, we're pretty deep into the, this uh, first book here or first set of books here. Uh, once they start hitting level three, level four, then uh, we will move on to we will move on to the expert rule book once they are beyond that. Um, and expert runs from level four to, um, I believe, level nine. I'll double check and see. Well, this is showing uh, all the way up through level 14. So it takes you quite a ways through there. Then I have, uh, and I just got this. This took so long to get to me, um, not, this is my second buyer, um, I, I mean, second seller, um, my original purchase on, uh, on eBay never got to me it, it got lost in the mail or it's floating out there someplace. And, uh, you know, fortunately I was able to find another, another copy of it, uh, which just came in the mail on, uh, on Friday. So I was really stoked about getting this, uh, you know, on Friday, so I can start taking a look at it. So this is the, this is the companion set of the book, and takes you even further higher up in level than that. Um, masters, like I said, I'm going to do a separate video on uh, on each of these and actually go through and talk about how they uh, they evolve the game rules and add more to it and potentially, you know, amend some of the older rules and such. So as I'm running through my, uh, my campaign, I'm actually introducing these things to, uh, you know, to my players. And then finally, there's the immortals, which I really don't have any intention of, of running this group up this high in level. But um, but we'll see. We'll see how it turns out in uh, in the months and potentially years ahead as they get through there. So once again, finally completed my uh, my collection. It probably cost me about um, because I avoided getting box sets. Uh, I just looked on eBay for just the books only, and so they ran about thirty dollars on average for each set. So this cost me about between one hundred and fifty and one hundred and eighty dollars to complete my final, you know, complete set. Now I know that there are you know plenty plenty of people out there that are going to say, well, instead of doing that and and putting this collection together, why don't you just get this and use this? And in my final video of this series, uh, which will be video number six of this series, I will do a comparison between this and Beck Me, and I'll explain why I like this, um, using this set, you know, a little bit more, and uh, I'll probably get into that, you know, once I shift over to the next view. So we will going to move on over to this screen here. 
So <coughs> this is the PDF, uh, you know, of the first book. And just very, very simple, you know, character creation. Now, I, I've done videos on, on the basic set previously. So I don't want to recreate that video all over again. Um, I just wanted to show you really quickly how simple it is to create a character using this system here. So um, you roll your ability scores. It's 3D6. It's generally done... Um, it's it's generally done in order, so you roll your three d six and then you place them into your attributes uh, in order that you rolled them, and then you take a look at the character classes and see which character class your um, your roles would be best suited for. Um, character classes: the humans are fighters, magic users, clerics, and thieves. Demi humans are not species but they're they're actual classes in older versions of dungeons and dragons and so you have your dwarf your elf and your halfling all right that is it for for levels one through roughly nine uh those are all of the classes that are available and each of the classes are are you know a one to two page affair unless you have spell uh spell casting uh then they, they might obviously include the spells uh, listings and it goes a little bit longer than that but for the most part every character class is well described and i'll show you really quick uh here's the fighter so here's the fighter's description and goes through talks about the fighter's details fighter's saving throws the fighter's experience table and then it talks about their xp their titles, their prime requisite. So a fighter's prime requisite is strength. If a character has a strength score of 13 or better, the character gains a bonus to experience points earned in every adventure. Their hit die is a, a D8. It's a little bit different from Advanced Dungeons and Dragons. Uh, now most, most DMs, I'm going to use the older, uh, the older phrase for it. Most DMs, and I'll switch views. Most DMs for the first level allow the character, although the players, to just take the max, the max uh, die roll plus their constitution bonus. So if you had a fighter, a fighter would have uh, eight hit points at first level plus their uh, their modifier for constitution. The game is, the game is uh, less forgiving than newer versions of Dungeons and Dragons, and so that's a, a little bit of a uh, a crutch for first level characters. A lot of DMs also allow the players to place the attributes uh, in the order that they wish. So you do your your six three d six rolls. And then you get to select and um, put those uh, attributes where you'd like them. Uh, so that's another very common uh, accommodation uh, for the players. That way players get to play the characters that they're, they're looking to play. Um, makes it a little bit easier, less re-rolling, and, and that kind of thing. Uh, other than that, I mean, it, it's, a, you know, it's a, a good idea, you know, in my opinion, uh, for players to deal with the with the roles that they have um because unless unless a character is truly broken uh a character can be easily role played uh even if they do have some lower level uh a lower um numerical attributes you know if, if they have a six in intelligence well that that's you know sometimes it's hard to play somebody who is much lower than your intelligence um, it's impossible to play somebody that's much higher than your intelligence. Uh, so, uh, you know, but it, it does lead to, you know, different role-playing experiences. So it's, it's sometimes best to, um, uh, play a, a, a near broken character, uh, so that you can start to develop that, uh, that ability to play, uh, 
you know, to play it through and to, you know, play a character that you normally, you know, would just re-roll. So it could be a lot of fun. The other reason why I like this series of, uh, of box sets as opposed to the, uh, as opposed to using the uh, rules encyclopedia is that when you're just using the one set of books, your monsters that are in the Dungeon Master's Guide here, uh, the Dungeon Master's rule book, the monsters are already geared up towards levels one through three. Uh, so there's there's very few monsters in here that are vastly beyond the ability of a player group uh, to handle. The other thing that I like about using these as opposed to this here is that the uh, the treasure tables and the you know especially like the weapons uh, tables that are in here uh, magic I should say the magic tables that are in here are also geared towards levels one through three. And so you're not going to have a, a really good chance of getting a, uh, a plus three sword or, or virtually no chance of getting a, a plus three sword. Uh, one of the best armor combinations that I saw in here was to get a, a plus one suit of armor and a plus one shield as a combination. So that was on a roll of a, a 20 on a D20. And so, um, you know, so you kind of limit what the players are going to be exposed to and, um, you know, what treasures they might, might be able to uh, acquire while using just this book. If you and your players are using this here, they are going to be, and you and they are going to be tempted to add more into the level one through three uh, campaign that you might be running. And so you, you might run into a little bit of a, a risk of giving your players uh, too much of a challenge or uh, giving your players access to equipment that or, or magic items that might make them too powerful for, you know, their current level. And so I, I found that it's, it's a lot easier, uh, makes more sense to me to just stick to each of these as we go along. So my current campaign, uh, I have about nine interchangeable players uh, in, in this campaign. So they're, they're playing seven characters and, uh, the seven characters are one for each of the character classes, uh, including the, the demi-human classes. And now that they're starting to approach level three, now I can start integrating some of the monsters that are in here and potentially some of the treasures and other, you know, other things that are going to come into play uh, as they do shift from from level two to level three, and to start preparing them for level four, which is when this will certainly set you know take a step to the side. Um, still might need to go back to it from time to time but then we start using the expert rules and moving on. So what I like most about this, and it's, it's not just for the nostalgia purposes of saying, well, you know what? I like playing the Dungeons and Dragons I began with, even though I began a little bit earlier than these booklets. Um, it's a very simple system to use. And it's a, it's a great system to introduce new players to Dungeons & Dragons uh, using Beckme as opposed to using, in comparison, 5th edition or, uh, in comparison, uh, the Rules Encyclopedia or in comparison to whether it be 1st or 2nd or 3rd 
you know, or fourth edition, you know, Dungeons Dragons or Advanced Dungeons Dragons. Uh, there was, it was first and second were advanced, and then after that, it just became Dungeons Dragons, three, three point five. Uh, 3.75 is, is sometimes, you know, that's basically Pathfinder, uh, first edition. And then, uh, you know, 4 and and 5. So, I prefer to use this. I prefer to run campaigns in this because, uh, you know, for the players, the character classes are very simple. Um, not very, you know, not very complex, not very, um, not too much variation in it and and so they're easier to play mechanically easier to play and it's a great situation for bringing new players in uh, who might not have ever played a role-playing game before or might not have ever played Dungeons and Dragons before so it's still very very popular um, you know in the circles that I travel you know within on Facebook, uh, a lot of people still playing uh, this, uh, you know, this particular system, and uh, there's always new uh, new discussions and new uh, new things being added to it. Uh, particularly from, you know, Bruce Hurd is still running a lot of his, uh, you know, his campaign and and his source materials. For uh, for that setting, um, and, and I didn't go too much into detail with the setting. I will spend more time talking about the setting when I do get to the rules cyclopedia because uh, you know that's something that this does extremely well. Even though these uh, each of these give you a little taste of the campaign setting. Uh, I'm, I'm using my own campaign setting, so I, I don't have to mess too much with that. But uh, that's probably something on, you know, on my radar for looking to get my hands on uh, going in the future. Many of these you can get on, uh, you know, in PDF uh, from Drive Through RPG or other sources as well. Um, like I said, you you can find you can find the original books on uh, you know on eBay if you're lucky. If you're just going for the books and not the box sets, uh, they they should run between you know twenty and thirty dollars, maybe a little bit more. Depends uh, if you just if you just hold on and hang out there, you'll you'll eventually find one that's uh, that's in that price range, and it's just it's just nice to have. You know, the originals, uh, I just like using them. I know a lot of my players will be like, wow, you're actually using the book. And, uh, you know, I just prefer it over the PDF, even though I have the PDFs and they're, you know, they're in a binder and, and nice and, and organized. And, you know, if I spill my coffee on it, it's, it's you know, not the end of the world. Uh, but I'm, I'm very gentle with these as well. Uh, or you can, you can just do this. But like I said, I, I prefer to work with the originals and then uh, we'll, we'll talk about this one later. So once again, I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, if you're, I, I do have a, a slot or two open in my, uh, in my campaign. And so uh, if you're, I know we're currently looking for a replacement magic user and a cleric. So uh, I, I think we have somebody for, the, for one or the other, so we probably still have one or two more slots available uh, because I do like to have uh, people on standby that can that can step in if someone can't make it. Uh, we play every week uh, on Fridays, generally speaking, unless something comes up. And uh, you know, it, it's a really great system to play in. You know, I you know encourage you to try it if you haven't. And uh, if you're looking for a game to jump on, you know, just. Uh, just drop a comment on the on the video here, and uh, we can we can make an arrangement for you to you know get the Discord information and the Roll Twenty information, and uh, we'll see about getting you into a game. So, once again, thanks for joining. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Uh, if you haven't subscribed, please consider subscribing. I'm uh, I'm gonna do a follow up video after this, a, a channel review uh, video, and. Um, 
you know, let you know about uh, a goal that I have uh, set up for. Once this goes gets uploaded, I'll upload that a little bit later on uh, this evening. And so be sure to look and check it out. If you subscribe, make sure you hit the uh, alerts button so you'll get my uh, you know notification when a new video has been put up. And I look forward to seeing you on the gaming screen sometime soon. You'll have a great afternoon. Take care.